The mansion loomed on the hill like a forgotten sentinel, its once grand facade now weathered by time and neglect. The three siblings, Eli, Clara, and Jack, stood at the bottom of the winding path leading to their inheritance, staring at the imposing structure. Their grandmother had never mentioned this place, nor had their father. It was as if it had been deliberately erased from the family's history until the old woman's will revealed its existence. Looks like it could use some work, Eli muttered, running a hand through his tousled hair. More like an exorcism, Clara replied with a nervous laugh, her eyes darting to the cracked windows and ivy-covered walls. Jack the youngest just shrugged. Come on, let's get this over with. It's just an old house. They trudged up the path, the gravel crunching underfoot, and pushed open the heavy front door. It creaked ominously, revealing a grand foyer shrouded in darkness. Dust motes floated in the slivers of light that pierced through the boarded-up windows. The air was thick with the scent of mildew and something else. Something metallic and sharp that made their noses twitch. Smells like old blood, Claire said, wrinkling her nose. Don't be so dramatic, Eli said, though he felt the same unease crawling up his spine. They spent the next few hours exploring the mansion. The rooms were filled with decaying furniture, ancient portraits, and forgotten memories. Every step they took seemed to echo through the empty halls, the sound amplifying the eerie silence that enveloped the house. It wasn't long before they stumbled upon the library. Jack was the first to notice it, a leather-bound journal, its cover embossed with the family crest. Hey, look at this, he said, lifting the book from the dusty shelf. Eli and Clara gathered around as Jack opened the journal. The pages were brittle and yellowed, filled with neat, spidery handwriting. It belonged to their great-great-grandfather, Edward Ravenwood, a man whose name had been lost to the passage of time. The mansion was built in 1894, Jack read aloud. Edward was obsessed with immortality. He performed all sorts of experiments using forbidden rituals and dark magic. Sounds like a nutcase, Eli said, but his voice lacked conviction. There was something about the mansion that made Edward's madness seem all too plausible. Clara shivered, wrapping her arms around herself. Maybe we should leave. This place gives me the creeps. Let's just check out the rest of the house, Eli suggested. We've come this far. Reluctantly, Clara agreed, and they continued their exploration. As they ventured deeper into the mansion, the air grew colder and an oppressive feeling settled over them. It was as if the house itself was watching, waiting. In the basement, they found a hidden door behind a rotting tapestry. Eli pried it open, revealing a narrow staircase that descended into darkness. Do we really have to go down there? Claire asked, her voice trembling. Yes, Jack said, a strange determination in his eyes. We need to know what's down there. They descended the stairs, their flashlight beams cutting through the inky blackness. The air was colder here, thick with the stench of decay. At the bottom, they found a small chamber, its walls lined with shelves holding jars of strange preserved specimens. In the center of the room stood an altar, stained with what looked like dried blood. This is some kind of ritual room, Eli said, his voice hushed with awe and fear. Jack approached the altar, his eyes drawn to an ancient tome that lay open upon it. This is where he conducted his experiments, he whispered, his fingers tracing the pages. He was trying to bind his spirit to the house, to achieve immortality. A sudden chilling laugh echoed through the chamber, and the siblings spun around, their flashlights trembling. Standing in the doorway was a figure, a translucent apparition dressed in tattered 19th century clothing. His eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and his smile was a twisted parody of warmth. Welcome, my children, the spirit said, his voice a hollow echo that reverberated through the room. I have waited so long for you. Clara screamed, but no sound came out. Eli and Jack stood frozen, their minds struggling to comprehend the sight before them. I am Edward Ravenswood, the spirit continued, stepping closer. And you are the key to my resurrection. Before they could react, the ghost lunged at them, his form dissipating into a swirling vortex of darkness. The siblings were engulfed in a wave of icy cold, their minds filled with Edward's memories, his madness, his experiments, his insatiable hunger for immortality. They awoke hours later, huddled together on the basement floor. The altar was gone, the chamber empty. But the mansion had changed. It was no longer a decaying relic of the past. It was alive, pulsating with a dark energy that seemed to emanate from the very walls. We need to leave, Clara said, her voice barely a whisper. We need to get out of here now. 
But the mansion had other plans. As they made their way back to the main floor, the doors slammed shut and the windows boarded themselves up. The walls seemed to close in, trapping them within. We're not getting out, Eli said, his voice trembling. He won't let us leave. In the days that followed, the siblings were tormented by Edward's spirit. They heard his laughter in the halls, saw his shadow flitting through the rooms, felt his icy touch in their dreams. He was always there, watching, waiting. Desperation drove them back to the library, to the journal they had found. There had to be a way to stop him, to break the curse. They pored over the pages, searching for answers. We need to perform the ritual in reverse, Jack said his eyes wide with fear and determination. We need to bind his spirit and destroy it. They gathered the necessary items, candles, salt, and the ancient tome from the basement. In the grand foyer, they drew a circle of salt and placed the candles at its points. Jack began to recite the incantation, his voice trembling. The air grew colder and a howling wind swept through the mansion. The wall seemed to pulse with dark energy and Edward's laughter echoed all around them. You cannot destroy me, the spirit roared, his form materializing in the center of the circle. I am eternal. But the siblings persisted, their voices joining Jack's in the incantation. The circle of salt glowed with an unearthly light and Edward's form began to waver, his screams filling the air. With a final desperate cry, Edward's spirit was sucked into the circle, disappearing in a blinding flash of light. The mansion shuddered and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. For a moment, the siblings stood in stunned silence, their hearts pounding in their chests. Is it over? Clara whispered. I think so, Eli replied, his voice hoarse. They gathered their things and left the mansion, its doors now open and inviting. As they walked away, they could feel the weight lifting from their shoulders, the darkness receding. But as they reached the bottom of the hill, Jack paused, turning back to look at the mansion one last time. In the window of the grand foyer, he saw a flicker of movement, a shadowy figure watching them. Let's go, he said, his voice barely audible. As they drove away, the mansion loomed in the rearview mirror, a silent sentinel once more. The siblings knew they would never return, but the echoes of the forgotten would haunt them forever.